morning and welcome to our Eucharist for this Wednesday. Uh, today we commemorate Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, kind of an unusual commemoration. We usually don't commemorate or think of musicians as saints, um, but here we are. Um, I think that part of the reason that um, Bach is remembered, I'm going to say it's twofold. Number one, the sheer volume of music and the influence of that music um, upon um, um, Christian worship for now almost um, 300 years. Um, the other thing is that we, we take for granted um, and we tend to think that hymnody and organs have been around forever. But at this particular time, um, so you're looking at the late um, 17th, early 18th century, um, an organ would be equivalent to a praise band today. Um, when I was rector of St. Andrews in Enfield, there were uh, two um, Presbyterian churches up the street from me. They were literally across one another, and um, they split in the 18th century. One was the organ church, and the other one was the, our voices are just mine, thank you very much, and we don't need to have any instruments. Uh, and it took them until um, the early 19, or the mid-1960s, um, when they decided to kind of bury the hatchet and they built a new church on the edge of, of town and, and merged again. Uh, so for a couple hundred years, they had this running feud going on about whether or not an organ is appropriate or not in church. So you can imagine that um, in Box Day, that was the, you know, the running feud. And also, um, the idea of hymns, um, of, of writing church music that wasn't strictly based upon Psalms, number one, or strictly rooted in scripture, which is what would have been popular um, church music up to that period of time. And so in England, you have people like Isaac Watts uh, that begin to write actual hymns, and Bach in Germany, and, um, and that movement begins to grow so that by the time you get to um, our days, um, we don't think twice about hymns. And, and actually, in, in evangelical Christianity, we kind of saw a movement back to uh, music having to be scripturally based. Um, so we've kind of gone full circle in, in some segments of, of Christianity. Um, so we remember um, Bach for what he added to our experience of, of of the worship of God. Um, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Sound out your majesty, O God, and call us to your work, that like thy servant, Johann Sebastian Bach, we might present our lives and our works to your glory alone. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. <clears throat> now when the priests came out of the holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without regard to their divisions. All the Levitical singers, Asaph, Heman, Herman, and Jedrithan, their sons and kindred, kindred, arrayed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyres, stood east of the altar with 120 priests who were trumpeters was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord 
when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord. For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord fulfilled or filled the house of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We shall say Psalm 150 in unison. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the, their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom God favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So in both our readings today, um, uh, music and praise um, plays a great heart, a part. Um, that music and praise becomes a way in which uh, not only do we glorify God, right, but that we experience the glory of God. I, I, I love that visual image that Chronicles paints for us. Uh, Chronicles is all about the, the particulars of temple worship. Um, and it goes into great, great detail about every minuscule item that you could ever imagine. Um, um, it is like an altar guild manual that spells out every single solitary thing, what people wear, what's proper and improper. And in the passage this morning, um, it kind of paints a picture of, um, of a musical assembly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just imagine 120 trumpeters and the amount of volume that that produces, and, and cymbals, and drums, and, and dancing. Um, and, and every time that image is kind of conjured up, um, I kind of juxtapose that to what we oftentimes think of as, as proper worship. And we tend to kind of stifle worship, right? You know, proper worship for us is sitting quietly, uh, singing, not too loudly, letting the choir kind of do a lot of the work for us. Um, God forbid we have liturgical dance, right? You know, uh, you know th that would completely blow our sense of, of, of propriety. Uh, this, this sense of, of all of, of, of my being, um, being engaged uh, in the praise and worship of God. And it's loud, and it's messy, and it's chaotic. Um, you, um, I, I, I doubt if Bach on his organ was chaotic. Because, you know, I mean, 
when, when we hear Bach, I mean, it's really precise. I mean, everything is kind of planned out. I mean, um, in our intro, we talked about how he blended Roman Catholic um, chant and, and Lutheran um, version of the Sanctus, right, where they're playing off against one another. Um, I don't think my ears would pick that up. Uh, I mean, you'd have to know both of those um, styles to be able to kind of pick that up. So, so he's very intentional, uh, yet the reaction to the organ when it was first introduced was it, it, it was loud, um, and, um, and, and it didn't seem proper. Um, if you want to kind of do a comparison, kind of Google square note hymnody. Uh, some of the, like Southern Harmony, Virginia Harmony, uh, uh, some of those tunes um, um, online. And listen to that music, but sang a cappella uh, versus a, a Bach hymn. Uh, and, and your ears will quickly tell the difference between the two. Uh, uh, they both have, uh, you know, they're both interesting. Um, there are harmonies um, in, in, in both. Um, it's, not, um, you know, it's not boring music by any stretch of the imagination. One utilizes the voice, the human voice, um, and, and teaches us all the human voice is capable of. The other brings in a multitude of instruments, because that's what an organ can do, right? An organ can be piano and trumpet and oboe and a whole orchestra in one instrument. Um, and and, and, and both, done well, um, lift the entire body, mind, and soul to God. Um, we have all had that experience of what I call soul music, you know, uh, and um, it, it doesn't make that much of a difference in terms of style, you know, that any kind of music can be soul music. Soul music is music that goes deep, deep into me and moves me. Um, there is an emotional as well as an intellectual response. You can feel your entire being being, being lifted up. Um, and when we have those moments, particularly as a congregation uh, you know, of individuals now singing in one voice. It is glorious. It is glorious. It's, I mean, it is awesome. It is wonderful, right? I mean, um, you can't find the adjective or the words for it oftentimes because it's beyond all of that. Um, and, and it has a long, long, long history and tradition, right? You know, that... Um, particularly um, kind of Puritan Protestantism wanted to rob us, I think, of all of that emotion, you know, that, that somehow um, the only thing that's proper, you know, is kind of this. You know, our head is holy and everything else has got to be sinful. And so it is inappropriate to bring everything else into worship. And so uh, the music tended to be more of a head experience, uh, a controlled experience, than kind of a let go. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I think that that's, you know, that's one gift of our commemoration today. The other gift is using whatever gifts God has given us for God's glory. Uh, yeah. Bach had the gift of music. Um, 
that was the gift that he was given. Um, I mean, my guess is he could have used that in any number of ways. Uh, he could have just been a court musician and just created... Um, it's harder to talk about secular music. I mean, because that did have a place, right? Could have just written a whole bunch of dances, right? Or, or just court music that people kind of sat back and kind of listened to and they were entertained by. Could have made a good living on that. Lots of composers, lots of contemporaries. That's how they made their, their living. He made his living by taking that gift and applying to the worship of God. Um, so whatever gift we have, may we use that gift to God's honor and glory. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the obedience of your saints you have given us an example of righteousness, and in their eternal joy, a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. 
After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of, this, of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Joining as one. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The gifts of God for the beloved people of God. Come to the Feast of the Lamb. The body and blood of Christ, the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Amen. The body and blood of Christ, the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you 
with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be, O Lord, a guiding star above me, a smooth path below me, a kindly shepherd behind me, and a bright flame before me, today, tonight, and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest on you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.